Hello, everyone. This webinar series is inspired by a questionnaire I sent out to some of you last year, trying to find out uh, what are the most pressing challenges that you might see with uh, implementing ZCRT recommendations. Obviously, you are working hard on this, so we want to support you in this. And this is this is the first one of of, of many, hopefully, based on on your uh, requests. And these requests were on scenario analysis gap assessments between your reporting and the CCRT recommendations, a bit on metrics and targets, and some on risk management. So we'll begin today with scenario analysis. We're very lucky to have ERM join us. So I'll hand over to Peter for this. Over to okay, you. yeah. Uh, so just to introduce ERM and our speakers, very pleased to welcome Tara Schmidt and Charles Allison from ERM today to present on the first steps to a scenario analysis. Um, ERM is a leading uh, global Sustainability Focused Management Consultancy. And they are the authors of the uh, Scenario Analysis Technical Support a Supplement of the TCFD recommendations. So, yeah, we're certainly lucky to have um, such authoritative speakers on the topic today. Tara is a Principal Consultant at ERM uh, and leader on the global energy transition. She has over 20 years' experience across the energy value chain, including assisting corporate strategy teams in some of the world's largest energy companies with long-term scenario development and analysis. Charles is a partner at ERM with more than 20 years experience advising on environmental and sustainability issues to multinational business, governments and organisations and this includes analysis of policy and regulatory developments and future scenarios and uh, advising on the threats and business opportunities arising from these. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Charles and Tara. Thanks all of you for joining. Um, and, uh, I think Tara and I are going to speak for maybe 35 or 40 minutes just to run through some slides um, that introduce uh, what scenarios are, um, how they can be applied um, to assessing climate-related risks and opportunities, um, what some of the value add is, um, and, and some examples um, of um, application. Uh, and we're, we're going to look at some examples both within the financial sector uh, and also within the corporate sector. So uh, if we introduce a little bit ERM and, uh, and um, my thanks already for introducing Tara and myself. So, so briefly just to recap on ERM, uh, we're, we're a global management consultancy focused on sustainability um, and um, we work with organizations right across the world. We're, we're present in 40 countries, uh, work with a lot of the global Fortune 500 and beyond um, and uh, we've been deeply involved in the, the climate agenda uh, for the last 20 years or so, uh, and I think it was that that experience of working with businesses um, like all of yours in, in thinking about the, the financial risks and opportunities, uh, not just now but into the future, uh, that um, that led to TCFD to invite us to uh, support them in preparing the uh, the technical supplement on scenario analysis. So um, let's just go on to uh, to thinking about that uh, that technical supplement and scenario analysis and uh, you'll see here a little uh, a little byline that was on the um, uh, on the technical supplement just acknowledging the input of, of, um, of the ERM team and including actually Adam Pierce who is now uh, seconded in to, to sit with you at CDSB and if we could just build that up Tara um, so one of the um, I guess one of the key figures in the, the technical uh, supplement on scenario analysis of, of TCFD is, is the six-step approach um, that really sets out how, how scenarios can be applied um, to help businesses to consider the, the risks and indeed the opportunities uh, around climate change, um, both uh, transition risk and opportunity uh, and also physical um, risk side, uh, how businesses can can apply scenarios um, in a, a, a very um, uh, um, well-documented approach um, to evaluate impacts on the business um, and then to consider potential responses. And you'll see in, in this six-step approach, um, uh, we begin really by an assessment of, well, the, uh, after um, ensuring that there is proper governance of the climate, um, uh, issue within a business, uh, we advocate that, um, that the, the 
the second step should be an assessment of, of the materiality of climate-related risks and opportunities. And um, we, we often talk of this four-box model, um, uh, which we'll, we'll come back to in a minute. Uh, and I think that none of you will be um, will be strangers to this sort of four-box model, um, uh, which has been applied by the CDP, among others, for, for many years now. But, but uh, the, the, this um, six-step approach really focuses in on how scenarios can be used by business to assess um, impact on inputs costs and operating costs, uh, on revenues, um, on their supply chain, um, and how that supply chain may be interrupted or impacted going forward. Uh, and indeed, what are, what are the potential, uh, what's the potential timing of these impacts um, uh, over the next five or 10 or 15 or 20 years? Um, uh, and then um, finally, what uh, might be the, the potential responses of a business to those impacts, uh, whether it's, uh, that's around changes to business model, uh, to the, the, the mix, the business mix, uh, and um, implications for investments um, that the company may make. And I, I'd just like to point out that the, the, the sixth point here, document and disclose, uh, very much is the the final step as we see it, uh, and whilst uh, the TCFD is a, a framework all around um, disclosure, um, we see that the benefits of this framework really come in, in helping uh, businesses to be better um, at how they assess and manage risk and opportunity related to climate change. Mm. So, just to, just to, sorry. sorry. Yeah, just to add one more point to that. Um, so you'll see at the beginning of the slide here that um, the groundbreaking uh, approach to scenario analysis, that's not something that ERM has come up with, but actually Mark Carney, who is the chairman of the G20 Financial Stability Board and the Task Force for Financial Disclosures, Climate-Related Financial Disclosures. The reason it's called groundbreaking is, is one, that in leveraging scenario analysis um, through this new approach that we're able to, to look very much forward-looking at how these climate-related risks could play out over time and truly assess um, more around the financial impacts here. So the groundbreaking element is, is really around that, which leads to the next slide, which I'll hand back over to Charles on. Yes, so, so thanks, Tara. I, I, I think that um, it, it'll be clear to any of you who followed the TCFD uh, development that this is being driven as a financial stability issue. Um, so it, it's not being driven um, from the perspective of um, let's reduce our impact on the climate. Um, it's being driven from the perspective of what is the impact of either unconstrained climate change at one extreme um, or of a rapid transition to a low carbon economy at the other extreme. Um, what are the impacts of those on the businesses that you're involved in? What are the impacts of, of, of those transitions on uh, the businesses that um, that your and my pensions might uh, invest in going forward? Uh, and, and, and rolling that all the way up, uh, what is the impact of these changes on the stability of the global financial system? So, so I think that that's, um, uh, that is what has been behind uh, the TCFD. And I think for, for all of us as, as sustainability professionals or strategy professionals or risk professionals, um, I, I think this is the, the, the this is a, a watershed moment really in uh, in starting to think about not what is the impact of our businesses on the climate, but what is the impact of the climate on our businesses. And I think, uh, thanks, Tara. I, th I think. That impact uh, clearly varies by sector, and it varies by location, and it varies by time frame. So uh, if we go back to this four-box model, um, uh, I think we'll all be familiar with how um, climate change can have impact on our businesses through shifts in markets that we sell into, um, through shifts in technologies that are available both to our businesses and to others. Um, through shifts in the, in the policy or regulatory framework within which we operate, um, and, and indeed risks that that framework may change rapidly or may not change rapidly um, going forward. Uh, that there are risks and opportunities around um, the way that stakeholders view our business, um, 
uh, whether they're consumers or, or uh, host country governments or others. Um, you know, do do they do they perceive our brand as being a positive one? Um, do they see our business as being um, a trustworthy partner um, uh, for the future? Uh, and indeed, um, what are the physical risks of of, of um, of climate extremes uh, and increasingly uh, frequent and severe climate extremes, uh, not just on our own assets and operations, but on our supply chains across the world um, and on the um, and on the markets that we may serve. So, so clearly, all all of these um, uh, all of these factors and these four boxes can be impacted, uh, and th these impacts are going to play out differently across sectors and geographies um, and different markets across different time horizons. Um, and none of us know exactly how that is going to happen. So I, I think that's where um, scenario analysis as a, as a framework, as a discipline, uh, can be exceptionally useful in, in helping businesses to, to understand um, uh, the potential implications of an uncertain future. Uh, and I think, again, coming back to, to role, the, the role of the sustainability professional or, or the risk or strategy professional, um, clearly to, to, um, to help your business, uh, any business, to understand this fully, that there's a need to really engage across the different functions and across the different business units within a business to understand um, uh, how these risks and opportunities are going to play out over time. So Tara, I think I'm going to hand over to you for, for the next few. Thanks, Charles. Yeah, so um, maybe just to take a step back and think about what are scenarios? What is the value add um, in this new approach? Scenarios are plausible alternative views about how the world could evolve. So applying scenarios to climate change and the low carbon transition to see how uh, you know, the future world could look. It's not a what if exercise for only one uncertainty. So, um, you know, there has been discussion around carbon footprinting and, and what that means. Really what's being called for by the TCFD, is, as Charles mentioned, is a holistic view on how the world could evolve. So carbon pricing is, is part of that and carbon footprinting, but, it, but also there are many other elements around markets and technology, reputational risks and, and physical climate change. The interesting thing, if we think about climate financial risks, is even in certain sectors where they may be very carbon intensive, if there's lack of lower carbon alternatives in those sectors, then the risk is lower than in some sectors that may be less carbon intensive but have more alternatives. So if we take, for instance, the aviation sector where there's little alternatives today versus the power sector where we see um, increasing uptake from renewables and, and also aspects around um, you know, digital transformation. Scenarios should provide challenge to conventional wisdom of the users, so um, we'll come to in a minute some of the principles around the TCFD, but really um, you know, stress testing your portfolio through a variety of different views is, is part of the approach for scenario analysis. What are the benefits of scenarios? Well, one is assessing the financial exposure to transition and physical risks, uh, and I should mention opportunities across your portfolios, um, and using scenarios you may choose, um, you know, at present, you know, it, it's, as Charles mentioned, there's different time horizons that uh, it appears a while, a while off, but scenarios can also be used to identify early market signals, uh, signpost monitors, so that you are prepared when you start to see a new scenario evolving that could really occur like a two degree scenario when you might want to potentially respond um, to any risks or opportunities. Scenarios are about uh, providing you with a, a range of strategic response options so that you have a robust strategy in place and, and able to monitor the market and look at physical climate change risks and also as the low carbon transition uh, evolves and if that might occur more rapidly. There's different types of scenarios to consider. So, um, you know, even if we think about from the TCFD perspective, um, you know, what is the scenario analysis framework? And so for some of you, when you look to implement the TCFD recommendations, you might take a top-down approach where you screen across your portfolio up front to really identify where are the, the most exposed parts of your portfolio or business units or assets. 
Others, you know, we see are starting with a bottom-up approach that they've already identified some areas where they see um, material exposure, either, you know, risks or opportunities. So they'd really like to delve into analyzing the financial impacts at an asset level, and, you know, if they're considering uh, physical resilience in assets and so on. And there's also two types of scenarios to consider. So you might go for holistic scenarios that are really looking at how the um, landscape, the business landscape could evolve globally. Or you might want to look at events-based scenarios, uh, which we tend to find is more in the bottom-up analysis. You might look at certain business units or, or areas of your, of your operations where you see potential exposure to technology-based events. Um, you know, or, or specific uh, policies that may come into play. So on the data sets, there's a variety of different data sets. So as Charles mentioned, there's transition scenarios uh, where you can look more at the risk around the low carbon transition and also physical scenarios and how physical climate change could play out. And there's been a lot of discussion on the IEA, and I'll talk a bit about uh, many of you are not energy businesses that are on the call, so, you know, how does the IEA apply to you? There are probably a bit more surprising um, applications from the IA when you think about, you know, for instance, fuel costs or, or power, if you're a power intensive business, how that might uh, impact you. But of course, there's a variety of other scenarios that might be more concerned with policies like the Paris Agreement or sector specific types of scenarios like cement. And so we, we can touch upon that also if you have any specific questions. But there are a variety of different scenarios out there that you could apply. And also from the physical scenarios perspective, uh, the benchmark typically is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change as a starting point, but there's a variety of other um, tools that are at your fingertips. For instance, the World Resources Institute um, aqueduct model as well, looking at you know, things like baseline water stress. The main thing to, to think about, because there's a variety of data sets that you could leverage, is really starting with the TCFD principles. So what TCFD is calling for from scenario analysis is the inclusion of at least one two-degree pathway. So it's back to the point on scenarios really should be challenging conventional um, wisdom, so thinking about um, stress testing your portfolio. TCFD has set a plurality of um, perspectives, which is also, as I mentioned, the benefit of scenarios, thinking about a variety of different pathways, and that could be the Paris Agreement looking at the NDCs, two-degree pathway. The other one is looking at business as usual. So typically when we think about scenarios, we need to be thinking about this wedge of risk. In a business as usual scenario, you typically find more risk around physical climate change versus a two degree pathway where you may see more risk from uh, the low carbon transition. The TCFD calls for publicly referenced scenarios so that there's transparency with your investors that they would be able to, um, to review the scenarios that you've actually applied. Um, so those are the three principles really from the TCFD. Looking forward, there's a few comments, I guess, around scenarios development. One is, uh, and we'll come back to this later on in the webinar, there, you know, there will be uh, developing a consensus on what good looks like, particularly for sectors that are not energy related, that's uh, expected to come over time. And the point on signposting, so scenarios continue to evolve. If we think about the IEA, their numbers change every year um, as they're signposting and seeing how technologies advance. So this isn't just a one-off exercise, but the TCFD expects that it will be something that will be replicated over time to continue to stress test your portfolios. From what Tara's just said, it's clear that there is um there's a wealth of publicly available information out there that companies can draw upon um, to inform the scenarios. Uh, and yet we typically find that um, when it comes down to thinking about your business in, in your geographies uh, and your markets, um, you're never going to get everything that you need from publicly available scenarios. Um, and, and clearly there will be a need to, to build um, uh, your scenarios, uh, your you could call it your risk context, if you like, going forward, uh, in a way that, that actually reflects um, the markets that you're in and the products that you sell or the activities or services that you offer. Um, and, um, you know, that will that may well require um, some of your own proprietary information. Um, so, for example, um, you know, what will your customers be thinking in 2025 or 2030 on this topic? Um, how will they be acting? Uh, how will your consumers be responding? Um, 
the, these are questions that the public scenarios aren't going to answer, uh, and I think that's where uh, there's a need to to supplement them with uh, with some of your own thinking. Yeah. So actually, uh, if we look at the scenario analysis framework, we see three key steps that we've been applying. So even if I take infrastructure as an example, um, so we've, we've been doing some work for um, a client looking across the different infrastructure asset classes. And you know, the first step is really to understand your own business footprint and the various sectors, um, time horizons, geographies that you operate in. So identify what's going to be, um, you know, the fit for purpose uh, scenarios that you should be applying to your business, and and first define and validate those scenarios. So do they apply? Do they make sense to you? Um, you know, in terms of how you run your business. The other aspect that Charles mentioned is with scenario analysis, the publicly referenced scenarios are really looking at the market. But there's a second part to scenario analysis, which is really understanding how your own business would respond. So I'll take a simple example like the IEA says even in a, well, in a two-degree scenario that only 60% of global energy demand will be fossil fuels. But uh, depending on your line of business, if you're in the energy sector, you may be the most competitive at the lowest cost, or you may be the most carbon intensive at a very high price. So there's also aspects around really developing the scenarios on, on how it applies to your own business. So that's really the key first step. The second step is really to look at your portfolio um, to, for, portfolio and how, um, how it might apply to your business. You might, there's two options here, as I mentioned before. One could be looking at your portfolio to plan and prioritize the detailed analysis that you're going to apply based on the TCFD recommendations. Or as I mentioned earlier, you might go ahead and do a deep dive to begin with. We find most, most of our clients that we've been speaking to will go for a portfolio analysis to begin with to understand where the exposure points are. But there are you know, some businesses you might already know where you're most exposed. And so you want to go for a pilot to really understand um, you know, how you would develop guidance material for assessing the risks and building up skills in your team potentially to look at how you'd add in physical resilience or various costs um, and benefits and, um, and address any risks and opportunities in the low carbon transition. Yeah, and if I could just chip, chip in there, Tara, I, I, mm -hmm. I think we often find that um, well, every business is different, but I think we often find that, that this exercise shows certain businesses that they they may have done a lot, for example, on transition risk and less on physical risk, uh, and so there are obvious gaps there to, 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 to plug, uh, or it could be to the contrary. They, they might have looked quite a lot at uh, physical resilience and not really thought about um, policy or technology risk going forward. Um, so I, I think this holistic framework can be quite helpful to businesses in, um, in, in making sure that they they have addressed all of the relevant risks and opportunities um, for the business going forward in a consistent manner. So to give you some, um, you know, I guess just looking under the bonnet, what does this potentially look like um, in applying the TCFD recommend recommendations? So the first option I mentioned is really to look more from a portfolio uh, viewpoint. So this is um, one approach that you could take um, that we've applied um, to, to some of our clients' businesses, but you, know, you could look at always starting with what industry, what sectors are you potentially exposed to. So Susanna, if I take your example, you, know, you might be looking at what am I going to apply, what are the risks for aviation and the various um, geographies that you potentially invest in versus toll roads um, you know, or other lines of business. So you could screen at a very high level for where are the risks and opportunities. And this is just the output of a, a high-level heat map, if I call it that, but really taking into consideration the four risk quadrants that the TCFD is called for under a various time horizon. So depending on you know, your asset life, you might look at 2020, 2025, 2030, or maybe up to 2040, depending on your investment period. How does this really work in practice? So the way that we really apply this, if we look at the scenario recommendations, is starting with the sector, looking at the geography, 
what are the impacts to that particular sector from the financial perspective? So we're always starting with the financial drivers. And as I mentioned, there's a variety of different scenarios you can apply, but really to focus, the first step is to understand what really drives revenue and costs in that sector and what financial drivers are potentially exposed to uh, climate change. So in the aviation sector, what does really drive revenue? What well, might be, depending on your line of business, flight demand. What really drives costs might be capital expenditures, say for emission reductions on um, fuels or on the planes. It might also be operating expenditure um, around carbon pricing. And taking one example here from revenue flight demand, well, how would you consider those risks with scenarios? Well, you could look out for various scenarios that might cover flight demand. The IEA actually does cover flight demand, passenger kilometers traveled uh, in various markets. The example here is India, and we've compared the business as usual um, outlook for the IEA versus a two degree scenario, and see there's a major difference in 2040 in flight demand for India, because in the two degree scenario, India, although there's an emerging middle class in India and lots of opportunity in aviation, in a two degree scenario, the country will invest a lot more in electric rail and infrastructure, which means there's a significant financial risk in aviation. So this is the general approach at a very high level and um, that you could apply across your various sectors that you invest in, or you might do it down to a business unit, or we've even applied this type of portfolio approach down to an asset level. Charles, do you want to give a few examples uh, from your, your work as well? So, so it, we often find that it, organizations or corporations that have been looking at this issues, these issues for some time, and, and they might have been reporting in their sustainability report or disclosing to CDP, um, you know, maybe they, they know quite well or they that they feel they know quite well where are the, the hotspots, as you put it, Tara. Um, that might be around certain assets in a certain country, or it could be around certain product lines or markets. And uh, so, so w w we often find that it can be helpful to to apply scenarios to those hotspots um, to get a better sense of how they may develop into the future under different scenarios. Um, and um, to, to point to or, or stimulate discussion around what the risk mitigations can be or should be uh, at different points in time. So I, I, I think um, you know we, we see some good success of actually um, doing deeper dives, and I think you, you'll come onto this um, around um, a particular part of of a business um, that that might already be understood to be exposed either positively or negatively. So actually, if we take that example, and so we've got here also the deep dive scenario analysis. So even the approach that I've just walked us through and identifying the financial drivers that are most exposed to climate risks, that actually leads directly into um, the revenue and the cost items, even in a financial model that you could interpolate based on the scenario analysis. Now the idea I should say with scenario analysis is not to, these are not market projections, but by incorporating it into your financial model, you can start to look at where are the real material risks for an asset or a business unit or a company, depending on if you're more from the financial sector or corporate sector, and that you can understand as well in these models and start to consider various options for mitigating those risks or capturing more opportunities. Perhaps you um, divest of of certain assets in your portfolio, or maybe it's a physical risk that you're going to incorporate more physical resilience, and you're looking at more at the cost or benefit within various scenarios. So that's one element of, of applying this down to deep dive, and, and that's really around you know looking at specific assets or business units and due diligence uh, from various scenarios. There could also be geographical responses, and um, so you can apply this same approach and looking at the impact, perhaps say on a sovereign or a country. And if you're looking at a new market entry, you may, you may reconsider is there significant opportunity or significant risk in a two degree scenario. Maybe there's gonna be more physical climate change um, or, or perhaps the, the country is very dependent on a specific sector 
um, which would also impact your own line of business and in the second or third order uh, impact perspective. So it may not impact you directly, but by looking through geographical uh, responses around climate risk, you understand the second or third order impact on your own business as well. And then there's also signpost monitoring. So in deep dives, once you've identified the financial drivers that could be impacted by climate risk, I mentioned you could also look at signposts to identify earlier on when the risk might occur, because clearly you want to be able to respond before the risk may come to fruition. Signposts are early market indicators to identify if a specific um, scenario may be coming into play. So if we take the example of battery costs dropping below $100 a kilowatt hour, um, and that may indicate that we see more mass market uptake of electric vehicles, you can monitor that in, say, a two-degree scenario. What are the costs that are, are assumed in the two-degree scenario and the uptake to identify what kind of impact it might have on your business? Um, and also looking at the financial drivers, if I take toll road, for example, versus uh, an auto manufacturer, that you'd be able to really um, look at the signposts that are most relevant to your own business. Is there anything you want to add, Charles? Yeah. Uh I think that what, maybe just to, to mention that one of the one of the gaps that we often see in the organisations that we work with is that um, there, there is often you know, m most large businesses will have an enterprise risk management framework that they apply, um, and, and often you know from business units or assets upwards that they'll be aggregating information on the risks uh, that are identified and assessed, um, but but often that is done with really quite a um, short-term horizon, whether it's 12 months or 24 months, um, uh, or at best it might be out to uh, a five-year period that, that maybe aligns with um, uh, corporate business planning. Um, uh, and I think that um, what therefore is often missed is, are these longer-term risks and opportunities um, that may be linked to the mega trends uh, and, and climate change could be one of those mega trends, and and so we, we see the value of scenario analysis really coming in there, where it, it enables a dialogue within a business around what are some of those longer term risks and opportunities, uh, and how might they impact, uh, and what uh, what should a business do about them? So how does this get all applied into the organisation? So once you've done scenario analysis. Um, you know, the big questions are, how can we better address these risks? As Charles mentioned, integrating into the enterprise risk management system. Perhaps it's building more around risk management capabilities. If you've identified second or third order impact risks that you hadn't, you hadn't seen on the horizon before. It could be um, we find in, in corporates investing more in technology or R&D in areas where they may see emerging opportunities. Governance frameworks or advocacy. So advocacy, I, I'd mentioned from the financial perspective, we're finding that you know in working with banks and insurance companies that they're wanting to to help uh, corporations more in the low carbon transition. So banks looking at green green lending opportunities, say to the real estate sector, uh, for instance. And then also, what actions can be taken to mitigate these these risks? So it could be around embedding more in your strategic plan uh, from the risks that you've identified and how you're going to respond. From a banking perspective, we're seeing banks, you know, um, identifying more around investment guidance. So where are they going to invest in particular sectors where there's upside or perhaps divest in areas where they see significant downside risk? Or the other element would be really pricing, um, you know, for the risk at hand as well. Charles, do you want to add a few few more in from the corporate side as well? Yeah, I, I, um, maybe just to add to that, I, I think there are a whole bunch of things that businesses can do within the business. Um, so, you know, your business can choose to invest in in, in different things. Uh, it could be new technology. Uh, it could be new assets. Uh, it could be upgrades to your assets. Um, you could change your portfolio. Uh, you could change your geographies. Um, all of those things you can do as a business. Um, e equally, there can be a, a number of things that you need to engage with others. Uh, 
to to um, to mitigate risk or build opportunity. So, so that could be advocating for for uh, different government policies. Um, it could be working with value chain partners to do things differently. Um, and um, uh, you know, we, we often see how um, businesses will need to do a whole range of things. Uh, some of them very much in the business. Some The last point you'll see down here on the slide is TCFD disclosure, and that's really that um, you know many companies. What we're seeing is they they may plan to disclose in the next year or two, but they're first really defining what are their potential strategic responses through scenario analysis. They've identified the risks, the opportunities. How are they going to respond? Which is that fifth step um, from the TCFD approach that Charles opened up with. And that really comes before disclosure is, is how companies will respond. We find there's kind of three key themes emerging. We see some companies that are really focusing on adaptations. They may be particularly exposed to physical um, climate change risks or in investing in um, adaptation and resilience building and their asset operations. Or they may be adapting in that um, they're reducing their carbon footprint across the, the value chain um, or their financial portfolio. They think more about from the energy transition perspective. We see companies that are investing um, in new capabilities. So to Charles's point around technology and looking at opportunities, they might be piloting new business models. And so even if we take um, audio manufacturers that are starting to uh, partner with car sharing businesses, um, looking at uh, alternative forms of transport, um, that would be one example. And we see companies that are really capital capitalizing um, so through scenario analysis, they've identified um, significant upside opportunities as well. So they may be looking to capitalize in new emerging markets um, you know, around the low-carbon transition, building out new uh, market capabilities and new products and services. Uh, so one example here might be um, Google um, looking at the Internet of Things and digitalization and the opportunities that that might bring. Anything else, Charles? Uh, no, I, nothing to add on that one. I'll hand over to you for this one. Thanks. So, Thanks. so um, organizations often ask us, well, what, what does good look like? What, what, what does a good disclosure of a climate-related scenario look like? Um, now, we, we, we've given you one example here, which is from BHP Billison, which I think is a, is a very nice example of how um, that organization has run climate-related scenarios um, very much in line with the TCFD recommendations um, and has uh, provided an output to stakeholders which is um, constructive um, in helping to show uh, you know, what might different scenarios mean for, for their business going forward, um, uh, whether that's around uh, thermal coal or whether it's around iron ore or whether it's around copper or, or the other the other commodities that, that BHP Billison produces. Um, so I, I think you know this is an example, but, but the, the point I'd like to make here is that um, uh, we expect many different um, flavors of, of um, disclosure to be um, uh, to be made over the next year, two years, three years by by companies in different sectors that really are going to be impacted quite differently by the climate change issue. Um, and so I, I, I think there will inevitably be a need to, um, you know, to find a, um, a style and a, and a content of disclosure that, that fits your business uh, and the way you typically interact with your, your investors um, and um, th that actually, you know, provides some answers to the questions that, um, uh, the TCFD stakeholders, if I can call them that, uh, are asking, um, but in a way that isn't um, uh, that, that isn't giving away commercially sensitive information. So I, I think that's that inevitably is going to be a journey for for everyone concerned. So I guess you know just on that point, as as Charles mentioned, it's really around um, we. The TCFD does expect that this is going to be a journey over the years ahead. 
Um, if we look today, um, so the TCFD recommendations have been delivered. Um, there are, I think it's fair to say, um, you know, some some potential gaps that um, companies are still looking to to fill. So more around, you know, the sector focused areas for scenario analysis, as we mentioned earlier, um, you know, and, and how to apply if, if the IA doesn't, you know, the IA scenarios don't apply directly to you. We do see that it will be a journey over time. Um, companies are already reporting on TCFD, and we expect the uptake will increase with, um, as many of you will know, then CDP is going to be incorporating questions then on TCFD and scenario analysis, so is PRI from the financial perspective and many others. Um, organizations we do expect in the next month with the reporting season to um, see many more that are disclosing around TCFD, and we expect the adoption to increase over time. Um, as TCFD is laid out, they expect the uptake of the TCFD um, recommendations really to grow over the next five years, and also the broader understanding of, as Charles mentioned, what good looks like. Um, I don't think we're, we're there yet, uh, but we certainly see uh, many companies that have signed up for the TCFD endorsements, and um, you know, there is there's benefit in early adoption um, you know, to be part of this journey and, and to learn as we go along. Thank you very much to, to Peter, first of all, for organizing this webinar, and of course to Charles and Tara with an excellent, excellent presentation, very much what we were hoping to get out of this, a very practical one. Thank you again both, and thank you all of you for your time. And if you do find these useful, do let me know we can organize other ones, more on Sonana or on the other topics that you've highlighted. Last but not least, I want to flag up Unilever and Ferrovio, both of whom have sent us their first TCFD Alliance a report, or sort of on the path to that. So do have a look at that. Congratulations to you both. And thank you again, and have a lovely rest of your day.